Hey guys, Mo Probs here and welcome back to my channel. So if you clicked on this video, chances are you're new to Civilization 6 or the Civilization franchise as a whole. And if that's the case, first off, welcome. A little while back, I released part 1 of my Civ tutorial series. If you haven't already, I definitely recommend checking it out as some of the concepts there are helpful to know for this video as well. As with the last video, I want to focus on helping you make the right decisions rather than trying to tell you exactly what to do. So originally I wanted to make another 10 tips video, but the length of it came out a little too long, so instead I divided it into two parts. This video will be covering how to manage your empire internally, and the next video will be covering how to deal with the external forces of the game. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Tip number one, citizen management. So to understand the concept of citizen management, let's first take a look at how you get citizens. The gist of it is, Every citizen in a city, noted by the number over here, consumes two food per turn, and any excess food is accumulated until it is spent on a new citizen being born. The actual growth rate is affected by this food surplus, as well as available housing and amenities. Now that we know how to gain citizens, let's take a look at managing your citizens. To open the citizen management page, click on a city. Then, click on the second tab, the one with the head on it. This will bring up a menu of all the available tiles in your city. You'll notice that at least one of your tiles will be highlighted with a citizen. That is the tile your city is currently working. Your city will also work the city center. If you want to change the tile you're working on, just click on the darkened circle, and now it will lock a citizen in place. If you want to change one you locked, be sure to unlock that citizen first by clicking on it. So you may be asking, why and when would I ever need to do this? And that's actually a pretty fair question, because generally, the game will see the number of raw yields the tile produces and select a tile for your city to work based on that. So generally, it will actually make pretty decent decisions. However, there will be cases where you'll want to override the default tiles. An example in the early game would be when you want to focus on growth. Food in the early game is important because having more citizens allows you to work more tiles and therefore obtain more resources. So early on, you might want to adjust the tile that your capital is working on to focus on getting the population up a bit more, but be careful not to completely sacrifice production at the same time. On the other hand, you might have cases where you're trying to produce something quickly, like a settler or a wonder. In those cases, you might want to consider reorganizing your city so that you can cut down the amount of turns it takes to build. Another very common case is when you settle next to natural wonders, and while sometimes you definitely want to work natural wonder tiles, there are some natural wonder bonuses which are not necessarily useful for a city early on. Changing from those will help in the long term, and can help your city grow better too. So when it comes to districts, you can also have citizens working in these districts. These are called specialists. They provide additional yields based on the district, but due to the fact that they do not provide food or production, you'll want to make sure that your city has enough food to support the specialists. Tip number two, using builders, the chop or improve decision. So up until this point, you've probably used builders to build a farm or any sort of improvement on a tile in order to improve the yield and obtain a resource. However, did you know that builders can actually do more than just improve tiles? Builders actually have the ability to remove resources and trees from a tile. This is what we call chopping, and this will provide the nearest city with a boost, depending on the type of resource it is. Generally, the boost will be food, production, or gold. So this could be very useful when you're in a pinch. For example, maybe you're really paranoid that someone's about to complete a wonder before you. In that case, you can bring a builder to some woods, chop the trees, and give yourself a quick instant boost to your production. So the question becomes, when should I be chopping? And to understand the chop improve decision, I think it's important to compare it to an idea in finance called the time value of money. The time value of money basically states that $1 now is worth more than $1 tomorrow, because $1 now can be invested and gain interest and therefore become worth more than $1 tomorrow. So this idea is the same in Civ. Is the boost I get from chopping this resource now more valuable than if I were to just improve it and work it? Oftentimes, the answer to the question whether or not to chop is simply what stage of the game you're at and what resource it is. 
Think about, are there enough turns for me to get use from this improvement? Are the yields for improving the resource worth it? What else could I place in this spot that might be more valuable? And I think learning to make that decision is incredibly important in playing Civ. Number three, and a common question I get is, what do I spend gold on? So again, I think the time value of money is something to think about here. Is buying this now worth it rather than buying something else or just producing it with the city's production? As a general rule of thumb, I like to prioritize my gold spending on purchasing tiles around cities and civilian units. If you didn't know, you can go to the bottom right panel when selecting a city and select purchase tiles in order to colonize new land. This is incredibly important as it helps you get better yields and better potential resources quicker. As for civilian units, Builders are usually a good investment, as usually within a few turns of being built, they can add a lot of value to your city. Buying settlers can be pretty useful too, especially if you see an opponent trying to make moves on your territory. Sometimes I like to buy traders too, and in those cases you need to think, how much am I getting from the trade routes? Will the gold I spend on this break even from buying the trader? Purchasing traders is nice though, because it can give you a great gold per turn boost immediately after establishing the trade route. I'll buy units if I need to reinforce or build an army quickly, otherwise I feel like I only spend money on buildings when I'm rich and it's later on in the game and I want to get a city established as quickly as possible. Number 4. Don't forget to change your government policies. This is more of a reminder because now that I play with people on Epic Games, I can't have mods anymore, which is painful. Every time you finish researching a civic, your government is unlocked and you can make changes to it. Don't always be so quick to click out of the civic completion screen, guys. Changing your government is super important because it helps you become more efficient. There are cards for different situations, such as when you want to upgrade units, when you want to quickly build settlers or builders, when you want to go to war, and being able to choose the right policy cards for the right times is pivotal. That being said, they really need to make it a notification to click on the bottom. There's actually a mod that gives you a reminder, but I'll actually talk about that and many other mods in future videos. Number 5. Learn the basic Eurekas and Inspirations So every once in a while, you might notice that you get a notification saying you obtained a boost in your research of a technology. Great, but how does it work? If you open up your Civic or Tech Tree, you'll notice that under each item there is some small text with an objective. When you complete that objective, you trigger a Eureka or inspiration for that research, cutting the time it will take you to complete. Now, given how extensive these trees are, it's pretty unrealistic to memorize all of the different Eurekas. However, I would definitely recommend remembering the early ones, as getting the boost early game is massive. There are also interesting things you can do with the Eurekas and inspirations, if you know what you're doing. For example, say that I'm in the process of researching irrigation and I'm a little past halfway done. I notice that Eureka says, farm a resource, and oh hey, I happen to have a worker right next to this wheat. So I know, next turn if I moved my worker there and built a farm, I would be able to complete irrigation. In that case, I could switch my research from irrigation to another tech I might need, thereby letting me get a head start there. It must be said of course, some of the Eurekas and inspirations you'll likely naturally get over the course of the game, but there are some, of course, which are out of your control. Learn to recognize those so that you can adjust your priorities as needed. Number 6. Learning Adjacencies So if you've already been playing, chances are you've noticed that sometimes when you place a district down, you get additional resources. These are bonus yields to the district, based on the tiles and improvements adjacent to the district. I won't dive in depth into every single bonus, but I do think it's important to have an understanding of these bonuses so that you can properly lay out and build your cities. I'll put a link in the description uh, with a cheat sheet for you to reference to better understand the adjacency bonuses. Understanding these will help you figure out the right places to settle and where to put your districts. Another helpful tip for this is using map tax. To do that, look for the map tax tab above the mini map. This lets you place a tax on the map reminding yourself of where you want to place your city center, certain districts, or certain improvements. And those are 6 tips to help manage your empire in Civ 6. Hopefully you learned something new, but if not, let me know what other topics you might be interested in and I'll try to cover them in future videos. 
In the next video, I'll be covering topics more around managing the external forces of a civilization game rather than the internal ones of your empire. That includes city-states, AI and diplomacy, going to war, as well as religion. If you're new to Civ, you're not going to want to miss this one. If you made it this far, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please consider giving it a like, a comment, um, let me know what other topics or what other areas of Civ seem to be giving you trouble, and I'll try to make videos to help with those topics as well. As usual, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace.